Good evening. The painting, The Primordial Parents, needs a very careful explanation because I'm not trying to offer a substitute for the Kabbalistically sanctioned primordial parents, Adam and Eve, and their ancient powers that have emanated through all the traditions coming from the book of Genesis. What I'm trying to suggest is a way in which we take certain archetypes and modify them through different theories. Years ago, I was fascinated when I read some of the theories of, a, of an American philosopher of the early 20th century, Charles Augustus Strong. Charles Augustus Strong held to the view of the mind stuff. In that theory, the mind comes from outer space to the earth and gradually accumulates substance through interaction with wherever it has landed. In that theory, Organisms gradually absorb mind and it grows and develops into what we would call now primitive, sensitive organisms or animals or members of the animal family. Now, in a way, I'm not talking about things that happen on the earth, except to say that according to Charles Augustus Strong's theory, which I consider extremely magical and subtle, the primordial parents were the sources of these microorganisms of mind stuff that came to the earth on some remote planet where there is little sunlight, certain amphibious creatures evolve the power of mind. Perhaps it's what they call in philosophy of nature, emergence. Emergence is used to suggest that in the theory of evolution of nature, certain happenings occur as a jump from what was un, uh, what was expected prior to their appearance. They're totally unpredictable. These emergences or emergence are transcendental beings, transcendental beings from the standpoint of their antecedents. They were not expected by their antecedents and so they emerged totally unexpected, totally unexplained, totally unanticipated, and totally outside of the range of probability. Yet they happened. Among them, the, the transcendental beings, and among these very sensitive metaphysical realities, we find the primordial parents on a remote planet, perhaps a trans planet yet to be discovered, fed by an internal volcanic warmth, and yet lacking the bright sunlight of our central sun of our solar system here. The primordial parents are there. We see them. One is the potter, the primordial father, the other the martyr, the primordial mother. They are, in a sense, 
the ancestors even of Adam and Eve. They are the scientific archetypes that made the patterning of Adam and Eve conceivable to a primitive writer of the Holy Scriptures. Now let us talk a little bit more of this theory of mind stuff. Mind stuff holds the view that on a remote planet waves of mind were somehow collected and sent through space. They arrived at various points or planets. They either prospered or failed. When they came to the earth, the mind stuff inhabited various organisms. How that process occurred we don't know, we're not concerned about it. It simply happened and gradually up the scale of evolution, mind stuff became more refined and complex and in a sense more self-aware until in the mammal kingdom the realm of all the furry, hairy beings of our planet, including ourselves and all our household pets, mind stuff became, in a sense, philosophical intelligence, profundity, meditation. When we see our pets resting and just staring, we know that they're in a state of meditation a Zen, imageless meditation. We try to do that with difficulty because our minds are cluttered with conceptualization processes like a vortex of ideas and images whirling about. We seek to clear the mind, get the mind real, get the mind true to its essence, which is to be a clear glass not something painted with specks. We want to go back to the primordial parents and the sense that here in the mind space of our creatures are all about us. We too can share in the vision of pure mind stuff. Some have speculated that mind stuff may have evolved beyond the ordinary human level into super adepts, transcendental Mahatmas. This is entirely possible and according to mystical teachers such as Blavatsky and even Aleister Crowley, mind stuff has expressed itself in Him Himalayan and trans Himalayan levels of mastery and cosmic intuition and cosmic willpower and cosmic transcendental imagination by which the universe itself can be made and remade. This is the pathway for the mind stuff. But going back to the primordial parents, we see them quite content to be simply looking at us, looking at us so many millions, if not billions of miles from where they are, through space and time. They're looking at us and they're looking on as proud parents, not just primordial in the sense of being the first to get the mind stuff going away, looking for new places to dwell and expand, but they become in a sense proud parents of the achievement of this movement of mind stuff through space and time until it's reached in our world the complexity that we call the encyclopedia of experience. So when you look at the mind stuff expressed through the primordial parents, we see the beginning and in a sense 
the boundaries of this vast experience. We call it the ontological experience, and everything that is written about it, everything that happens using this primordial mind stuff is like so many pieces and lines and touches of graffiti scattered everywhere in the universe suggesting things that we can identify with words and concepts. That is why the primordial parents represent the fulfillment of the mind stuff. They represent the source from which all the ontological graffiti can be said to emanate. And in a sense, like all parents, and even metaphorical parents from 1950 sitcoms, the primordial parents look on at their children, their offspring, their emanations, with a sense that could only be called cosmic pride. Look at the primordial parents and understand the whole evolution of every experience that mind stuff has brought about. Thank you.